Say what you mean, make it rhyme, and put music to it. The famous words from John Lennon when he was given advice to David Bowie on songwriting. John Lennon was a fantastic songwriter, incredibly talented, and we're going to be taking a deep dive into everything John Lennon in this video. Now, my name is Danny Boyle. I'm the founder of Songwriters International. If you haven't already, please consider dropping us a subscribe. And also, we've got a completely free training in the description below where I walk you through my entire songwriting process. So you can go ahead and register for that. But let's jump into the training. Now, in that quote, John Lennon makes songwriting sound quite simple, right? But from a songwriting perspective, I totally agree with what he's saying. And we're going to be going into this in this video about what he actually means when he says, say what you mean, make it rhyme and put music to it so that then you can take these same concepts of how John Lennon approached the songwriting process and make your songs sound that bit stronger and deliver messages that captivate listeners all over the world. Now, as I mentioned, I agree with what John Lennon said here because that's fundamentally what songwriting is. If we look at it very simply, it's saying what we mean as a songwriter, saying what it is we want to deliver in the song, then making it rhyme and making it sound a little easier and nicer on the ear, and then putting that together with music to sit right underneath and bring it all together. That is songwriting in a nutshell. But let's first of all go into say what you mean. Okay, what does that actually mean in regards to songwriting? This is where songwriting should really start, and this is something John Lennon used to do a lot, really get clear on what it is we're trying to deliver to the listener. So a great exercise that I recommend for you when you're writing a song, when you start that process, think about this. What am I trying to deliver in this song? If you were to go up to one of your listeners after they heard your song and you said to them, what was the point of my song? What did you take away from my song? And they should be able to tell you exactly what it is you were delivering in the song. And the way that you do it is by reverse engineering the process and starting at the beginning starting on what it is we are wanting to deliver to the listeners. Imagine you have one of them in front of you and you're writing down on a piece of paper or your laptop, what do I actually want to say to them? How do I want them to feel? What do I want them to think about my song? And then we put that down into a plan of action and then we segment that into our song. And then we're able to go about saying it like we mean it and in the way that we want. Now, oftentimes, a lot of songwriters, including myself in the past, have gotten caught up in production, chord progressions, melodies, all of those things that are part of the process. But you can't beat delivering a great message that captivates people that is said in a way that you truly mean. But once we have figured out that point of the song and then we are delivering that message, then we can go about actually saying what we mean in the song. If we look at John Lennon's song, Imagine, which is a great example, the whole point of that song is summed up in just a couple of lines. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope one day you will join us and the world can live as one. That is saying it in the most simplest way and delivering the message to the listener. So imagine John Lennon went up to the listeners around the world at that time and said, what was the point of my song? What is it that I was trying to deliver? Everybody out there would know exactly what it was that he was trying to deliver. And you should have that same simplicity to your song, that when you are speaking to your listeners, let's suppose hypothetically, and you ask them, what is the point? What did you take away from my song? I took away this. And this is exactly what it is that you should have been delivering. So like I say, in that scenario where it's imagine, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope one day you will join us and the world will live as one. And it's as simple as that. He says it exactly like he means it. He says it like he wants to say it. He says exactly what he means. He wants the world one day to live in peace where there's no divisions. There's no anger, there's no frustration. There's just one big world where we are all together. And that's exactly how he says it in the song. And it's said so perfectly. It's not said in a really fancy, quirky way that we don't really understand. And we're, we're thinking, does he mean this? Does he mean this? No, he says it very directly. So we know exactly as the listener, what it is we are actually understanding from the song. This was also a very common theme throughout the songs of the Beatles, throughout all of their successful songs. There was one common denominator 
that went throughout the songs. And that was just simplicity, saying exactly what you mean. For example, you had songs like Help. You had songs like I Saw Her Standing There. Another song, I Want To Hold Your Hand. Or another song called Love Me Do. Another one is All You Need Is Love. It's so, so simple. The songs were said and delivered with the clearest message that if the songwriters of those songs, John Lennon and Paul McCartney, went to the listeners around the world at that time and said, what did you feel? What did you take away from the song? They would say exactly what it is that they were trying to deliver. So say what you mean when you're in that songwriting process. Now let's go into the next stage of what it is that John said to David Bowie. He says, say what you mean, make it rhyme. And now, it's funny that John says make it rhyme because a thing that John didn't do very much of is rhyme, believe it or not. He didn't follow the standard rules of rhyme. Looking through all the songs that John written, especially with the Beatles and individually, he didn't focus that much on rhyme. He was very driven by the message and saying what it is that he wanted to say and saying what it is he meant to the listener over everything else. This is demonstrated in the song Imagine. Imagine there's no heaven, it's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Now in there, he only rhymes try and sky. They're the only rhymes that he has in that section. Okay, so he rhymes the second line with the fourth line. And then he rhymes nowhere else in that section. Then he takes the same rhyme scheme and then he continues it on into the song. So in only two lines out of the seven that he has there, that goes to show how simple you can be with the rhyme and that it doesn't have to be a common theme throughout the song. You don't have to have perfect rhyme. A lot of songwriters will have perfect rhyme at the end of the sentence. So they might have, for example, I went to buy a cat and then I went and bought a hat. Then I went and something fat. Then I, and it will be this continual theme right at the end of the sentence. And unfortunately, that's very obvious when we do things like that. The listener starts to pick up on it. It's perfect rhyme, so it's very, like I say, obvious. Where if we take the rule of thumb of just, let's figure out what we're trying to say, and then the rhyme pattern and the scheme should be a second thought later on. I suggest for you not to go into the songwriting process with the concept that you are gonna rhyme these lines with this line and this line. Let rhyme happen naturally. Let it flow in the song. And then we go to the final part here, which is put music to it. And if we look at John's songs as an individual, as a songwriter, but also when he wrote with Paul McCartney as part of the Beatles, we see that the time signature that he uses for a lot of the songs is 4-4. Four, four. four beats for every bar. Now, that's the backbone of a lot of rock songs, a lot of dance songs, a lot of R&B. It's just a great time signature to drive the song forwards. Now, in other songs, he does do things like 6A and 4-7, but for the large portion of his songs, he's using a very simple time signature that 90% of songwriters would use, which goes to tell me, again, that throughout John Lennon's process, the big thing that I want you to take away is simplicity. Don't overcomplicate things. Whether that's the lyric and just delivering what it is that you want to say. If you want to say, I love you so much in your song, sometimes you can just go about saying it, saying what you mean. It's very, very simple. The next thing is rhyming. Don't overemphasize rhyming. Don't put too much thought into it. Let it happen naturally and don't have to follow the standard A, B structures or A, A, B, B uh, rhyme instructions that you might find in most songs. And then finally, the time signatures of your songs. Again, very simple, following a structure that has been known to work for so many songs, which is for four. And whilst you're following a very common way of writing a song, it's you who makes the song unique. You are the songwriter, there is no one else that is you. You are the songwriter, no one expresses words the same way, no one writes songs the same way. You are individual, you are your own songwriter. And as long as you don't lose that, then no matter how common the theme is of your song or how common the time signature is of your song, it's always going to be unique because it's you. So I for sure have been implementing this into my songwriting for years and I encourage you 
to go ahead and implement that same simplicity into your songwriting. Now, if you haven't already, please go ahead and consider dropping us a subscribe, drop a comment below. We've also got a completely free training where I walk you through my step-by-step -step songwriting process to how I pitch songs to global artists, so that's in the description as well below. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you over on another one.